Every plant has a story. I'm going to tell you the story of the Aristolochia gigantea. So the Aristolochia gigantea, or the Brazilian Dutchman's pipe vine, is native to Brazil. Um, where it grows as a vine. Here's the vine right here. It has these really nice heart-shaped leaves and uh, grows pretty vigorously. We have multiple small ones and we have a pretty large one here at the UC Davis Botanical Conservatory. And interesting fact about the leaves is they don't um, fall off when uh, they dry. So we have to have students a lot of times go and just sort of hand pick off the uh, dead leaves. They don't really have an abscission zone. And if you're a Top Gun fan like me, um, I like to sing sort of the uh, danger zone song, but ethylene to the abscission zone. Sorry, bad joke. Anyways, okay, so this is one of my favorite flowers. It has a very interesting pollination story. So the flowers hang like this and they trick flies fruit flies and sort of uh, carry on flies into thinking that this is meat or something dead. And that's where flies want to lay their eggs and their babies. Cause when they uh, hatch, open up, that's what they eat, dead things. That's why you see maggots on poo and gross things. So of course they land on it. They either lay their eggs or they realize they've been tricked and the flies are like, I'm out of here. So I always joke that they're really great parents. They lay their eggs and then they're out of there. So the flowers are going to be hanging and they're going to be backlit. So what's going to happen is that yellow part right there is going to mimic the sun. So the flies, insects, even people, the way out of places is going to be the light. So the fly goes, okay, this is the way out. And this flower will produce these trichomes, these hairs that are pointing down in this throat. And it'll sort of force the fly down into the back of the flower, which is right here. Now we're assuming the fly has visited another flower and has pollen on its back. So when it enters the flower, right where it's in this tube here is the reproductive parts of this flower. So this is considered a perfect flower, meaning it has both female and male parts. As the flower opens up the first day, it's acting as a female. So the reproductive structure, the stigma is receptive to the pollen that the fly has on its back. And so as it's walking around, it's brushing up against the stigma. So overnight, the flower stops being a female, becomes a male, and will dump more pollen on the fly. At about the same time, those hairs that are holding the fly in that pouch that are in this throat magically, okay, scientifically, break down and allow the fly to fly out. Now, because insects, flies don't have a lot of memory, probably sees another flower right next to it, gets tricked to go into it and does the same thing. So this way, the flower is pollinated. So even though this flower is male and female, it stops self-pollinization by having its parts work at a different time because you want your genetics out there. Ideally, you wouldn't pollinate yourself. So I know we don't have a smell of vision, but the nice thing about this flower, it doesn't smell like poo or death. It actually smells like a lemon pledge. And that's why I was saying it was possible fruit flies come and pollinate it as well. Now, as far as growing this plant, it is tropical, so it doesn't handle temperatures below 50 degrees. Um, so growing it outside anywhere uh, cooler than like zone 10, it's not gonna happen. Now there is a California native Aristolochia, Aristolochia californica, and it has much smaller flowers. And um, I always joke that, you know, the Aristolochia californica is like an only child. The flowers are small. They don't need to be like very bright and crazy looking to get attention. But if you're growing in the tropics where there's just color and masses of plants everywhere, you're sort of like a middle child. You need to be sort of loud and obnoxious, right? Um, so we grow this inside. Like I said, we, we have to prune it regularly. Uh, it's probably a good thing that this doesn't grow where the pipevine swallowtail is at. Now the pipevine swallowtail uh, larvae will feed off of the native one, but this in fact is a poisonous to the pipevine swallowtail. So if you think, oh, I wanna grow this outside, say in Southern California where it stays warmer, you're gonna be poisoning those larvae. So you don't wanna do that. Um, so. Yeah, that's the Aristolochia gigantea. We usually start it from cuttings. And uh, I do have to show you probably the most important scientific discovery about this plant. So, ready? Here it is. Here we go, here we go. There we go. Everyone knows someone who looks like this, right? And I also have to show you the uh, flower bud, which is quite impressive. 
So this is the flower butt, and you can see the seam right there, and I'll just open this. Whoop, pops open like a balloon. So there you go, that's the Aristolochia gigantea, and now you know its pollination story.